Hello, Rick here for the 2014 Formula Electric EV Vehicle Competition for the Hackaday Contest. Here I wanted to show you the, the vehicle uh, personally, uh, kind of show you how it functions. Um, showing you the battery management system and the charger and uh, all the electronics working in the car required for the competition. So here we have a vehicle that would normally be driven by two motors right here. Uh, the two motors are actually under repair right now, so I can't show you the wheels spinning, but they do spin. I'll have to upload some videos later about that, but here are the two wheels, uh, motors that were driving the two back wheels. They're, of course, independent, uh, left and right, um, which allows us to do torque vectoring. And we have um, sensors right here and right here. Allow us to detect the wheel speed and detect for a slip. And, uh, these um, motors are just brushless motors, um, and uh, this one actually got a damaged brush in it, so we're waiting for that brush to come back, but, uh, and we adjusted the timing on this one, and, uh, you know, normally would go in the vehicle, but, uh, of course, in repair, so I can show you, though, it's starting up. So, um, they'd go right here, and uh, they bolt right in, and then the accumulator is right here, which is battery management. Uh, a storage device will slip into the car at a angle into here so it's completely protected by the tubular frame of the vehicle and then down here we have the motor controllers two Kelly motor controllers right there um, and then uh, this would be the distribution box for the power and output and then we have our cables going to the motors right here this is a low voltage system so we don't have um, extremely high voltage here, so we only have like 36 volts when the car is fully charged. So there's not, like right now, there's not a lot of precautions in place for, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, arcing and stuff like that. But um, per competition rules, we do have to have um, uh, uh, conduit, and we have to have shielded cable and connectors and stuff like that uh, throughout the vehicle to isolate uh, the system. Right here, we have the, what we call the MCC motor controller controller. So it converts the digital signals from our EC, which I'll show you in a second, to analog signals. And right here, at least four devices right here, those are our relays that allow that signal to be passed through um, uh, to the motor controllers. Um, and what we do is we generate the voltages right here by four DAX. Uh, two for throttle and two for region control, and then we check that on the other side with an ADC and verify that uh, we are sending the right voltages we want to send out, and if that's still consistently true, we hold that relay on. Um, and it also allows us, in case we lose power, the relays of course shut off and short out those outputs so that the motor controllers, even if they still have power, um, shut down um, and stop outputting so they don't float. It's an isolated system. Um, those motor controllers sadly are not isolated. Those um, motor controllers aren't so isolated, so we actually have to have an isolated uh, board here. And here's the high voltage side, and here's the low voltage side, and we have optos and uh, digital logic converters in there to isolate our two boards. And then it's, of course, RS45 up here. And uh, here's our ECU right there, and then uh, which uh, processes the, all the information on the car and uh, computes a vectored output and the motor controller board down that I just showed you, uh, processes and turns into analog signal. Um, it's got three uh, RS-45 buses this thing can uh, uh, run off of. Actually, it's a 18 mega 1280 processor um, coded in the Arduino library. Um, and then we have our XB right there that uh, gives us response from the car, allows us to know what the car is doing, what the battery management system is doing, and stuff like that. Here's our battery management system that we uh, built ourselves. Um, this is a uh, this is a DSPIC 33FJ128 GP804, uh, and that allows us to talk to the slaves extremely fast. You can kind of see it right there. Um, once at the time, I thought it was there were two and a half seconds. If I think I'm wrong, I think it's we got the um, system down to like one and a half seconds to talk to 
all 27 slaves. Um, and it's, of course, isolated right there. You can see the double dotted lines going through the board. It's isolated up to a couple thousand volts. And then we have uh, our accumulators here. You can see all the blinking red lights uh, telling us that they're receiving data. And if you look at one real closely, uh, you'll see the green light blink once in a while, and that tells me it's telling us that it transmitted out a piece of uh, information. So it received the packet, processed it, and then transmitted out um, over, of course, RS-25 as well. All of those are in series. So I'll take this off. It'll be a little bit more easier to see. Uh, per competition rules, we also have our main contactors right here and here. We have our high voltage disconnects, our current sensors, one for the battery management system and one for our safety system. Um, we have a bender isometer, text to make sure we don't have um, um, any of our traction side voltages touching anything that shouldn't be touching, so like ground or the, each other, the resistances getting close to each other. Have fusing, of course. Um, and our, we have also pre charge. We have the NLC down there, there's our pre-charge resistor, pre-charge relay, and another pre-charge relay. Uh, let's uh, show you one more thing about the car. I'll show you. Here's one of our last boards on the car. Uh, this is our SAS board, our sensor acquisition. Um, it takes all of the analog inputs and uh, converts them to a digital signal that's actually software filtered um, and a little bit of hardware filtering. Um, and sends it over RS-45 to the ECU. So, uh, that being said, um, I like to start the car up. And uh, I'll show you the process of doing so. It's actually required a certain way the car has to be started required for the other competition. So, I'm trying to figure out the best way of doing it. I'm showing you guys. I hope this gets it. Pre-charge relay hit, um, and then you heard the main contactors hit, you heard the ready drive sound fire off, and then T-cell lights now blinking to tell us that the high voltage system has been activated. Of course, you know, we can't play with the throttles and tell you to, that the motor's, the motor's spin, but we'll hopefully show that later. You can see the ECU has now changed state. It's uh, got both, both uh, buses running now. One other thing I forgot to talk about is safety board. So this is trying to make the car as safe as possible to drive. Um, it has uh, two uh, systems in here to detect IMD and brake plausibility, which is a conflict of power going to the motor and the uh, person driving the car hitting the brake. Detect that and shut off the car. And then the IMD, which is the insulation resist uh, resistance meter. And then we also have here is our um, the system to detect, or I mean to control pre-charge, discharge, and main contactors. And this is actually to detect um, our uh, switches and detect which one is tripped so we can kill the ECU. Now let's see if I can show you telemetry package in the car. There's a telemetry package running on our car. Um, I'm not exactly sure what this is displaying right now. My software engineer would know, but... Uh, kind of tell you that it's live out, but uh, it tells you wheel speed when the wheels spin. So I just spun that wheel by hand, and it tells you speed. And then I think if, if I remember correctly, one of these buttons, wasn't that button? Oh, there it goes. Uh, it, uh, let me close the comp port right here. It's telling us the battery voltage is right now. So, Thank you.